Uh, in the post today, we have an atomic that I bought off eBay. It's about 220 pounds, something like that. So let's see. Let's see what we bought today, shall we? Well, first of all, small dent, that doesn't really matter, it's not gonna affect the coffee. It's a beautiful jug, nice and shiny. Look at that label, absolutely perfect condition. That turns, which is nice, that's in the wrong position, that should be bent the other way. But that looks, at first glance, to be in very good condition until you try and get the steam knob out. And it's stuck in there, and no amount of lubrication or anything else will get that steam knob out. If you actually look closely, this one's got a crack running through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a vise on that. This is going to shatter and it's going to leave a little metal, square metal thing that I'm going to be able to get some pliers around and then with brute force, I'm going to try and get that out without completely knackering the threads. And this is one of the things you've got to be aware of when you buy secondhand comics. That looks absolutely beautiful in the picture. Unless you've got the right tools and unless you've got a few spare steam knobs like this, when you get that home, you're not going to be making any coffee with that for This is part two of the video. And I'm going to try and remove this steam knob. We basically bought this on eBay. This knob ain't going nowhere, as they say. I'm going to take an old dish towel, just wrap it round. This knob is going to break when I try and get this out. But that's just the way it's going to go. I'm going to use a adjustable wrench like this if we are extremely lucky we might even get this out the first time usually it takes a lot more than <clears throat> my first attempt the brute force attempt was completely unsuccessful so I'm now gonna go for the Plan B, which is to knock this off with a saw and a hammer. This thing here is a adjustable steam nozzle, which doesn't seem to be adjusting at all, actually. You should never really touch these on a new steam knob. There's never any need to touch this thing. This one looks like it's stuck in anyway. I'm just going to get it out because it's going to help me Gonna help me get this off. So I'm just gonna go for brute force now. There's already got a crack running through it. Saw it off. It doesn't matter damaging this because we've got a spare. If you ever buy one of these and the steam knob is stuck, sometimes they do come out and sometimes the threads are absolutely fine. Most of the time that I've done it, it entails getting a new steam knob, which you can get from Bond Trading in Australia or off eBay. This is a particularly stubborn one. Be really careful doing this because you do not want to damage the machine or the aluminium. Yeah, that's one side off. Now, that is not actually what I was expecting to find. I was expecting to find a nice little rectangular thing. So that's obviously a different type of steam knob. Now then, this may help us, it may not help us. We'll soon find out. Try 
this at home, but sometimes you just gotta. Resort, we're going to try heating it up. Now, when you heat this up, you've got to be really, really careful because this machine is going to get very, very hot. What we don't want to do is melt all the heat seals underneath. What's happened is the rubber has all melted in there and welded. No amount of brute force is going to release it, so I'm hoping if I heat the aluminium up slightly, it might expand. Unfortunately, both bits of aluminium, so they'll probably expand at the same rate, which isn't helpful. But we'll see. Okay, after several hours heating under a gas flame, didn't do any good. Finally managed to get a very fine screwdriver in and hack the rubber seal out. Add a bit of three-in-one oil in there, and I'm gonna use a little bit more brute force on this one, and see if I can get this. <coughs> Big fish got there in the end with sheer brute force. Look at that. Got me a coffee tasting of three in one oil for the next few now. If I go like this, let's see what the problem is. See all of that? <laughs> see that? My goodness me. That's gonna take some serious amount of cleaning before we can have coffee out of that one. But we got there in the end. Right, the last part of this video, having spent hours getting the old uh, steam knob out, what you can see is that this steam knob here, the new one, well not quite new, isn't going in any further than that and if you try and force it in you'll cross the threads and you'll have the whole problem again so what we're going to have to do is get a is we're going to have to read all the threads get a tap and die and very carefully just grind out those threads that job but without it this coffee machine is not going to work In the final part of how to fix an atomic, I'm going to show you how, or at least how I would grind out the threads. The threads on this atomic, put it crudely, are knackered. And I'm going to attempt to grind out new threads. So the first thing you need to do is somehow clamp the atomic so that it's perfectly horizontal. And the way I do that is using a, a um, Black & Decker Workmate. And then I use the function on that's built into every iPhone, which is the spirit level. So basically, if you go to the compass function on your iPhone and swoop right, you will get to a spirit level. And this here is going to be perfectly level. I'm just going to adjust it like that. As soon as it's level, that will go green, okay? Once the atomic's level, the next thing we need to do is put a little tap in there. Now, the tap that we're going to use is you can get these off eBay if I show you it like this you might be able to read that a half inch tap just pause the video and make a note of that the next thing we're going to do is we are going to 
we're going to put this in here. We're going to put that on top of that. We are going to. We are going to. That so it's exactly at zero. Now, if you want to save yourself having to re grind the holes, the threads more than once, my advice would be to get a piece of paper and put it into the atomic as far as it will go so it's touching that steam tube and it'll expand into the gap. Then just get a felt tip pen and mark how far that is. And then just hold that, hold that up against your tap and actually just mark on there. And that will tell you how far, when you're drilling your holes, how far in you can go before you start grinding away at the tube inside there. Okay. I've made sure that's exactly level, or it's as level as it's ever going to be. And very slowly, I'm going to turn this and I'm going to try and grind out these threads. No touching, okay? You don't want to go too far because there's a tube in there, basically the steam tube. Okay, now I'm going to just shine a torch in there and have a little look and see what it looks like in there. They might even find that we've done enough, but I just want to make sure that the tap isn't actually touching that tube, which it isn't. We're going to do a little bit further in there. Okay. Oops, just moved. Okay. I reckon that that is going to be good enough. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Still turning nice and easily. Okay, wish me luck. I'm going to take that out. Should screw out nice and easily, having said that. Should screw out beautifully. Like that. Not to. When you've ground out those threads properly, the steam knob should screw in really easily all the way till you get to the rubber seal and you'll, f you'll know when it gets to the rubber seal because there'll just be slight resistance. Now, if you've got a new seal, you don't need to tighten that knob as, as tightly as you can. You just need to do it finger tight. If you're getting any leaks, I've seen it probably means you need a new rubber seal. The mistake that most people make is they over tighten that knob and eventually you'll crack it or worse. Okay, moment of truth. We'll put rather more water in here than we normally put in. This is a beautiful atomic, lovely spout. This is a brand new. Not, you can get these from bond trading. Now, rather than putting fresh coffee in here, what you're going to do is use this morning's coffee. Because um, we're just going to run coffee through this machine lots and lots of times. A leak inside, no leaks from the side, no leaks from here, no leaks from underneath. Run water through that machine about four or five times. There's the first coffee we're making on this machine. We've washed it out three or four times. I thought Mom was crying. Really nice machine, beautiful pressure in there. Tiny bit of creme as well. 